Now, Russia says it's thwarted several Ukrainian offensive attempts within the past 24 hours. The defense minister is saying that the unsuccessful attacks in the eastern cities of Donetsk, Zaporizhia, and Bakhmut came at a heavy cost for Kiev. It added that the attacks cost Ukraine up to 300 troops, four leopard tanks, and five U.S.-made infantry vehicles. Ukrainian president, meanwhile, said that counteroffensive against Russia is going on, but we refuse to provide further details. Volodymyr Zelensky made the comment during a press conference with visiting Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. For his part, Trudeau announced a $375 million worth of military aid for Kiev. Canada will continue to stand with Ukraine with whatever it takes, as long as it takes. Since last year, we've committed over $8 billion in funding assistance to Ukraine, including over $1 billion in military aid. In addition, our spring budget extended a $2.45 billion loan to the government of Ukraine for this year with the aim of supporting Ukraine's recovery and reconstruction. Today, I can announce that we will provide $500 million in new funding for military assistance. Now, Trudeau also said that Canada will take part in a multinational effort to train Ukrainian fighter pilots. He added Canada is seizing a Russian-owned Antonov cargo aircraft that landed in Canada last year and started a process of forfeiting the aircraft to Ukraine. Russia has time and again said that the West's military aid uh, to Ukraine would only prolong the war and add to the sufferings of the Ukrainian people. Now, in this special coverage of uh, Ukraine and Russia war, let me invite a couple of guests. John Miller, our correspondent, is there in Moscow. And Ken Stone, uh, who is with the Hamilton Coalition to Stop the War, is in Hamilton. Good to see you both. So, Johnny, let's begin with this so-called counteroffensive. Uh, looks like that it's going on, as also Zelensky is talking about it. But it doesn't seem to have achieved much, apart from what Russia is saying, uh, uh, hundreds of Ukrainian lives and some Western uh, provided uh, military logistics and uh, equipment. Well, yes, we, we, we suspect that this counteroffensive has gone on for a number of days already. Now it's being admitted by both sides. We think perhaps uh, incursions of the Belgrade regions in, in Russia, even the dam explosion, the Dipto might have been connected with this counteroffensive. Now Ukraine has, uh, the last few days, has been mounting major offensives in the Zaporozhye region. The problem for Ukraine is that Russia has had a month uh, to defend, to, to, to to create defenses against this counteroffensive along the Zaporozhye region, the south, they've been able to build lines, uh, numerous lines of defense. Russia also has major uh, air power. Can you hear me okay? Yes, go ahead. Yeah, sorry, there's connection problems. Uh, <laughs> Russia always has one of the largest air forces in the world. They, they find it difficult to use a lot of the air force inside, deep inside Ukraine because of air defense, but around the front lines, they can use their air defense, their, their, their air power. Also, Russia have an overwhelming power um, superiority in, in artillery. And so we've seen the Ukrainian attack so far. Frankly, they, they've been a, a massive failure, and uh, Western media is admitting that as well. Uh, it's clear that the, 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 far, the vast bulk of the Ukrainian counteroffensive has yet to come. But at the moment, uh, as many predicted, the Ukrainian counteroffensive stands very little chance of succeeding, and that's what we're seeing on the ground so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Ken Stone, uh, uh, we've uh, discussed enough of uh, uh, you know the reason uh, for this war being dragged on and uh, the Western support for it, especially the Europeans and Americans. But now we have Canada now here. What's in it for Canada? I mean, uh, President uh, Prime Minister Trudeau just saying, whatever it takes, no matter how long it takes, we'll just keep uh, contributing to this war. Um, Canada has been, from the very beginning of this war, an ardent supporter of the Ukrainian government. In fact, it helped to put the uh, Ukrainian government into power 
uh, in the U.S. sponsored coup of 2014. And ever since then, it has been arming and training the uh, de facto Ukrainian NATO army. Um, as Christia Freeland said in her spring budget uh, last year, the purpose of sending the $8 billion of Canadian taxpayers' money to Ukraine is to, quote, vanquish the Russian Federation. So this is a U.S. proxy war in which Canada is a full participant, and, uh, and mm -hmm. they are trying, like the U.S. and NATO, to destroy the Russian Federation. That's, the, that's what the money is for. And all this money and the increasing money that uh, Trudeau announced today in Kiev, uh, $500 million could be used to um, relieve the problem of homelessness in Canada. It could be used to provide, to build up, rebuild our medical system after the pandemic. It could be used to mitigate against climate uh, chaos, which is striking Canada, mm -hmm. all our forests are on fire. So instead, they're spending the money on war, and our peace movement says that there should be a negotiated end to this war uh, as soon as possible. And for our part, we are touring Dmitry Lascaris across Canada, a leading peace activist who went to Moscow in the month of April and has come back to tell Canadians mm -hmm. it's time for negotiations to end the war. Yeah, in addition to what you said, Ken, that money could also be better used to provide some drinking water for maybe Aboriginal Canadians. Uh, Ken, also tell us about this. I mean, uh, I again want to uh, repeat the question, uh, how would Canada benefit from this? I mean, is Russia really considered a threat to Canada or is uh, Ottawa doing this just because it's uh, helping NATO and the U.S.? Canada is in this uh, war because we are part of NATO. The U.S. aggressive military alliance, which destroyed Yugoslavia, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, and many other countries. And we are in it as a junior partner, a willing partner to the U.S. empire. There is no benefit to this war for the Canadian people. As you said, there is no money to even give drinking water, clean drinking water, to the native people in Canada. Okay, thank you so much uh, for that. But before we go, Johnny, if you could also tell us about uh, the dam explosion and uh, 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 what's happening now, about the ramifications. Well, yeah, both, both sides continue to, to blame each other for the dam explosion, uh, but it may well be connected to the counteroffensive in some way. As, as I say, the, the counteroffensive is the major story right now, and the world is, the, the dam is, is, is a major story, but the world is being uh, diverted from uh, towards the dam and the incursions toward Belgrade, but really the Ukrainian counteroffensive, which they've been, they've been talking up for many months now, is, is, is going on. Uh, there's huge loss of life at the front line, uh, soldiers at the front line on both sides as well are, are suffering. We'll have to wait and see in the coming weeks for whether this Ukrainian counteroffensive achieves any success, because if it doesn't, uh, then more calls are going to be uh, put up by European countries, I hope particularly, about whether this war should end in a peaceful agreement soon, because the Ukraine has no hope to take back the four regions, then clearly a peace agreement uh, should be the, the most beneficial way forward. Uh, but all that, and there's a large fog of war as well going on in the, in the front lines. Uh, but all eyes right now on the, on the counter Ukrainian counteroffensive and will it prove uh, successful? Right now, it looks like it's 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 really struggling, uh, mm. but we'll have to wait and see. Okay. I appreciate that. John Emitter in Moscow and Ken Stone, Hamilton, Ontario.